medals, medals galore. The city is Baku, the setting is the National Gymnastics Arena and we have 15 medals to be awarded over the next couple of hours in this scintillating weekend of Artistic Gymnastics World Cup action as the season makes its way towards the Continental Championships and later the World Championships. How quickly the start of the season becomes the heart of the season, becomes the end of the season, becomes Olympic season. That's on the mind of all of these athletes with Paris 2024 on the horizon. But more immediately on the horizon is what's in front of you there. Three men's apparatus finals, two women's. We're going to have vault and balance beam in tandem, uh, pommel horse and floor in tandem, and the horizontal bar all on its own to conclude our coverage. It's a brisk paced thing, the Baku World Cup. The action comes uh, thick and fast. They run the finals uh, in pairs mostly and it allows for very quick transitions between the uh, apparatuses and between the exercises. And not much time to think, not much time to take a breath. Plenty of time for them to be entertained and you as well. It's a great pleasure to have your company wherever you're joining the action from. My name's Ollie Hockman and I shall be guiding you through as best I can the action today. Onwards to Cairo after this, the last of the four World Cups, though we still have World Challenge Cup action to come. Don't worry if you're not entirely clear on the difference between uh, the World and Challenge Cups, doesn't really matter, you just watch them and enjoy the gymnastics. They are on a slightly different tier, but it's always first-rate action when you're watching World Cup competition. The flags of the nations competing in the rafters of the building. Very well attended World Cup following in the footsteps of Doha last week. And what a, an interesting spectacle we've got coming up with the men's vault final and the women's balance beam in just a moment. The explosivity of men's vaulting, the finesse and control and artistry of the balance beam and yet they are linked by their power linked by the strength that is required to excel in both of them the commonality of artistic gymnastics the key elements of form and execution and style that run across every single one of the ten apparatus not every single one of those nations is going to take one of the 15 medals today who will it be? I'll leave you to have a last think about who of your favourites is going to be as successful today. Yesterday we saw Milad Karimi of Kazakhstan win the men's floor. Nikita Simonov of Azerbaijan was victorious on rings and Carlos Yulo of the Philippines won the parallel bars competition. Yes, you heard that right. Carlos Yulo of the Philippines, not Ukraine's Ilya Kovtun. The unbeatable man was finally bested in a very close final. In the women's vault, it was uh, Colleen de Villar once again. Because we are all going loco for Coco. She did absolutely superbly two weeks in a row to take the vault title. And what a lovely moment for Chu Chi Yuen of the People's Republic of China winning the uneven bars after the disappointment of the week before. All of that brings us to now and the start of competition on day two. National Gymnastics Arena in Baku, Azerbaijan is hosting this final day of World Cup action and we are about to begin the first of five finals. Out onto the field of play come the contenders for balance beam glory. And the men's vault competition which will run alongside the women's balance beam final. Let's have a look at the contenders.
Croatia's Aurel Benovic, sixth best in the preliminary round. Gabriel Bertonetti of Romania, junior world champion. Madiol Fati of Iran, he's been exciting this season. Shek Wai Hung of Hong Kong, the two-time Asian Games champion. Great Britain's Harry Hepworth, the junior vault champion at national level. Carlos Yulo of the Philippines world champion in 2021. Nicola Bartolini of Italy, a silver medalist at the Mediterranean Games. And Andre Medvedev of Israel, a silver medalist at the World Championships. Over to the beam, Sakaguchi Ayaka of Japan, Ruby Pass of Australia, Tinghua Tian of Chinese Taipei, Anna Lashevsky of Ukraine, Viola Pierazzini of Italy, Georgia Vila, her teammate, Elisaveta Hubareva of Ukraine, and Francis Marine Boye. And we will run through the accomplishments of the women in the balance beam final in just a moment. But it is a decorated, decorated balance beam final, especially with the likes of Marine Boye. Nice to see Aral Benovic in a vault final. Not a pleasure that we get a great deal. And uh, just nice to see Sakaguchi Ayaka full stop because she's a lovely gymnast. The finalists in the men's vault competition and the top performer in qualification was Madi Olfati of Iran. He'll go third in the order. He'll have to contend with Carlos Yulo of the Philippines who goes second in the order. And the third best in qualification was Andrei Medvedev of Israel, the last to go. But it is a men's vault final, so who knows really, who knows? The finalists in the women's balance beam competition. Top in qualification, Georgia Vila of Italy. Second best was Marine Boye, the Olympic and World Championship finalist on beam. And the third best in qualification, Anna Lashchevska of Ukraine, who won a silver medal in Doha on this apparatus last week. Should be a very interesting final, this one. So the touch warm-ups are just coming to a close for the first four gymnasts in each of the two finals. And as I'm sure many of you know, it works in two half blocks. So the first four will warm up and then after they've competed, the next four will warm up in a split system. And we're looking there at Gabriel Bertanete of Romania. Looking very nice in his warm-up. Well, the people have been very excited by Romanian uh, gymnastics after what happened in the women's competition at the uh, World Cup in Doha. More on that another time. Let's get these finals started. Sakaguchi Ayaka, the first to go in the women's uh, balance beam final. Silver medalist at the Japanese Championships in June of last year. Eighth in qualification. She's part of that lovely Japanese team that was so exciting at the World Championships in Liverpool, was in genuine medal contention for much of the final. Well, isn't that nice? Nice 
poise drop down into the squat position for the wolf turns giving a sense of linking the elements of her routine it all feels uh, rather cohesive That's a delightful start to this balance beam final from Sakaguchi Ayaka, the 20 year old. Now we go to Aurel Benovic of Croatia. Aurel Benovic of Croatia, the first gymnast to go in this men's vault final. Sixth best in qualification is difficulty cumulatively about 0.8 down from the top performers in qualifying. And he just will take a, a 0.1 penalty on that handspring front layout with double twist. it was overall a, a fairly nicely executed vault it will be tough for it to match qualification where he had a whopping 9.433 for execution it was a lot better than his second vault we very much know him as a floor specialist it's nice to see a little variety to uh, him at World Cup level. Now, interestingly, we'll just come back to that. 14.1 for that first vault, so certainly down in execution from qualification, plus that penalty. But he's indicating that he's attempting a Dragulescu, and in qualification, he produced uh, a Roche, so he didn't have that extra half twist uh, ending to the roche so it'll be interesting to see what he produces now Gabriel or Aral Benovic I should say so if he does uh, go for the Dragulescu, which he's indicating, then we're going to see uh, four tenths added to his difficulty score, assuming that he does manage to uh, find it. Let's have a look. Well, no, he sticks with the uh, Roche vault. So it will be the 5.2 difficulty and what he produced in qualification. Sakaguchi Ayaka, 13.366 is well up from qualification by over half a mark. Well, yet again, a Japanese gymnast does wonderfully on beam. Nothing changes in the, the last several months of competition. Great to see. Ruby Pass of Australia will be the next gymnast to go. The 15 year old. And fig tree in Wollongong, fourth in qualification. What a nice gymnast she has proven to be. She so nearly won a medal on the uneven bars yesterday. Ah, oh, that's uh, not too far away.
just her second senior international competition. She is absolutely one to keep an eye on, Ruby Pass. 14.566 for the second vault for Benovic for a 14.333 average down, very slightly from qualification, but his Roche was a lot better than in qualifying. So uh, first vault went down, second went up. Now we see a gymnast who compared to the first competitor, Aral Benovic, has an extra 0.8 in difficulty. This is Romania's Gabriel Bertonetti. Fourth best in qualification. Oh, and he's just a little off axis landing that Kasamatsu double. Eric Lopez's vault proving uh, problematic for Gabriel Bertinetti. And this will certainly drop him down compared to qualification because he executed this well in the preliminary round for 14.666 mark. Twin brother Robert, a uh, very nice vaulter. Ah, oh, this is interesting. Looking at uh, Gabriel Bertonetto's intentions, the vault that he's it seems going for is the Rise Guang and that's a 6.0 13.266 so he's down by about 1.4 from qualification if he does go for this uh, Rise Guang then that's going to be beyond what he attempts in qualification which was a 5.6 difficulty vault. Or rather what he was credited with, of course, because uh, you can go for it, but you might not get it. Let's have a look. Gabriel Bertinette, second vault. Well, hands going down. It actually was a Dragulescu that he uh, went for. It's been a, a tricky final for Gabriel Bertinette. And for Ruby Pass, 11.066. But I reiterate my comments from earlier. Just keep an eye on her as time goes on. She's exciting. Ting Hua Tian of Chinese Taipei, the Asian champion on beam in Ulan Bata three and a half years ago. Very nice gymnast on this apparatus. Controlled in the switch leap mount. No issues with her power and her line. Same with the walkover. Small adjustment there. Oh, that seemed to come rather out of nowhere. She made the beam final in Cottbus at the start of the season. Lots about that routine that uh, worked extremely well, but uh, regrettably for Ting Hua Tian, it was a case of nearly but not quite. A case of nearly but not quite for Gabriel Bertinete of Romania over on Vols, a 13.249 average score. 
well down a mark and a half almost from qualification. To Madi Olfati of Iran. Top qualifiers, 21 year old from near the Caspian Sea, the other side of the water from Baku. What a lovely gymnast. Some nice Iranian uh, gymnastics going on at the moment. Oh, it's big, isn't it? That is the Yang Yachenko double pike. He just uh, seemed to tweak his back as he landed. Tell you what, this chap gets some amplitude when he vaults, doesn't he? Golly. And it is so difficult to get your angle of landing right coming out of a double pike like that. He was a fraction away from over rotation, but that should be a pretty healthy number. 14.866 in qualification. Yes, 15.033. Well done, sir. Lovely piece of vaulting. And you've got a particularly nice uh, second vault as well. This was the better of the two in qualification, 15.033. If he gets this, he's going to be hard to beat. hope he's okay gosh that looked like a very painful attempt to stabilize himself oh dear well Matty Olfati he tweaked his back didn't he in the first vault we'll come back to him in a moment as Tinghua Tien scores 11.433 oh Matty Olfati your heart goes out to him because it in stumbling backwards he seemed to hurt himself Anna Lashevska of Ukraine on the uh, beam third best in qualification 13.533 what a nice candle mount to begin with great toe point she was the silver medalist in Doha good height as she uh, elevates her body from the apparatus. Oh, it's such a nice walkover. She really is rather stylish, isn't she? We overuse the word balletic in gymnastics, but in some cases it should be used, and she does have a balletic quality on the balance beam. That really is nicely performed, real dexterity from Anna Lashchevska of Ukraine contending performance certainly fourteen point three nine nine is the average for Madi Olfati a thirteen point seven six six for his second vault we just hope that he's okay because he really looked to be in some significant discomfort as he went to ground on that second vault
Women's Vault Final will continue in just a moment with some high difficulty from this gentleman. Shea Kwai Hung of Hong Kong, the eighth best in qualification. All of his chances really depend on what we see from him in this first vault. This is Rise Guang. It is hugely difficult, 6.0. He struggled in qualification, still got into the final. Oh, that's better, isn't it? Much, much better from Shek Wai Hung. When he is on song, he's just terrific. A man they call Stone. 31 year old. The uh, Tsukahara double back tuck with the full twist added. Goodness me, it's a big vault. Now, his score in qualification was 13.533. I think it is fair to say we will be not seeing a great <laughs> resemblance when this number comes in. When he had a very serious injury as a child doing gymnastics, his mum came to the gym with him every single day to look after him. And he's looked after his score very well here, 14.866. Execution not as high as some will see due to the form in the air, but his amplitude and his difficulty well rewarded. Now, he had no real problems with uh, his Dragulescu, the second vault in qualification. Check why hung. Second vault. Chance to move into the lead. And he will do almost certainly after that Dragulescu. Yes, there's the step out of bounds. But it's landed and it's big work from the gentleman from Hong Kong. Not too much surprise there. Anna Lashevska goes into the lead. 13.433, just a tenth shy of her qualification performance. That brings us to the halfway mark of the women's beam competition. Lashchevska leads ahead of Sakaguchi. Then there's Daylight before Tinghua Tien. We still have got the top two qualifiers to come, Georgia Vila and Moeen Boye. So with those names left in the frame, it is not even remotely concluded. At the moment, Lashchevska leads. And she's once again proving herself uh, to be a fearsome contender at just 15 in her first senior year. Shekwai Hung with a score of 14.566 for the second vault, a 14.716 average. Well up from qualification by uh, over half a mark. He goes into the lead. Shekwai Hung ahead of Amadi Olfati and then Aurel Benovic at the halfway mark of the competition. But we do have... Carlos Yulo, the second best qualifier to come, and Andrei Medvedev, the third best qualifier. associate Nicola Bartolini mostly with floor for obvious reasons but he's a very nice vaulter 
and he is actually no stranger to international finals and indeed international medals on vault. It's always one of the great pleasures of a World Cup competition to see gymnasts slightly out of our usual sphere of experience with them. On we go with the vault and beam finals. Young man from Great Britain, Harry Hebworth, 19 year old from Cookridge in Leeds, seventh best in qualification. That's a big Dragulescu and largely very well performed by Harry Hepworth. This was the better of his two vaults in qualification. He participated in the floor final yesterday. He has a small landing adjustment. A well performed uh, vault. The uh, Dragulescu, it was drawing applause from the Romanian delegation watching on. They do know a thing or two about Dragulescu's in that part of the world. Fourteen point seven six six for Harry Hepworth, up by just a fraction from qualification. The second vault for young Harry Hepworth had some difficulties with this in qualification. Oh, that was a lot better. Well done, Harry Hepworth. Very nicely performed, Lopez. And that should really transform his qualification score. Two Italians. One, Georgia Vila watching and waiting for her chance. Now to Viola Pierazzini of Italy, the 15-year-old. First time at a World Cup competition. Well done to her for making the beam final. Great accomplishment. adjustments here and there but this is a very composed looking performance Really well done, Viola Pierazzini of Italy. And Harry Hepworth goes into the lead, 14.816. Hepworth with a score of 14.866 for that second vault, almost a mark up from qualification. Carlos Yulo of the Philippines. The 
Second best in qualification. Lovely. Beautiful divers like position as he executes that Blanick. He's so tight in the air. Just have a look at the apex of the skill. So often in vault, we look inordinately at the landing. Toes, heels together, tight pike position, straight legs, very symmetrical. Mild landing adjustment, but his form in the air is a treat to watch. And that scored a 15 in qualification. We've largely seen 5.6 volts from the leaders with the exception of Shek's uh, Rise Guang 6.0. Yulo is a gentleman who in these World Cup competitions has been posting 5.6 difficulties consistently. 15.033 for the first vault, marginally up from qualification. Well, he's got this final in his grasp now. Hepworth's lead is looking a touch vulnerable. But there'd be no shame in being surpassed by the world champion from uh, 2021 and the silver medalist last year. 23-year-old Carlos Yulo with his second vault and a chance to go into the lead. Big Lopez, and although the landing lacks stability, once again in the air, he's just terrific. Twelve point six three three for Viola Pierazzini. Well done to her on her World Cup debut. We've got some big contenders to come. The shackle or shackles are coming off in this uh, beam final. We've got Vila and Boye. Here is the top qualifier. 13.866. Oh, lovely. Now there's real control in this display so far. Beautiful x-axis on the wolf turns. really are blaring out the mana skin aren't they <laughs> on the <laughs> on the PA system it's what you need when you're on beam lovely from Georgia Vila great performance she's never competed uh, at an apparatus world cup before this weekend we have a new leader 14.933 Carlos Hulo 14.833 for the second, so he goes ahead of Hepworth, Hepworth even. Nicola Bartolini, fifth best in qualification. Now his execution of this first vault in the preliminary round was a delight. It's a 5.2 difficulty, not as high as some of the other vaults. He uh, has half a twist less in his Kasamatsu work, but it is very nice. A one and a half uh, twisting Kasamatsu style vault. He won the silver medal at the Mediterranean Games in Algeria last year. a bit of an all Italian fest at the moment isn't it in this double dose of finals Pierazzini Villa Bartolini 
14.666, not quite as strong in execution, the landing adjustment perhaps accounting for that. Still 9.466 is the strongest execution mark we've had for any vault in this final. To his second vault, 4.8 difficulty, so 8 tenths down from many of the top contenders. Yes! Double twister Yachenko from Nikola Bartolini. Just wondered if uh, the tree was going to fall there as he stabilised himself, but uh, no cry of timber. He stayed absolutely firm. You would think the leaderboard will change. It certainly does. 13.966. She goes into the gold medal position. A tenth better than qualification. Well done, Georgia Vila. Elizaveta Hubareva of Ukraine, the sixth best in qualification, 12.833. Eighteen-year-old who was part of the European Championship winning team in 2020. Oh, just about won the battle for stability, but it will come with some sizable deductions. Ukraine's Elizaveta Hubareva doing very well to uh, stay on the apparatus. Nikola Bartolini, 14.399, exactly the same as in qualification. He was a little down on the first, a little up on the second. All much of a muchness. Andrei Medvedev of Israel, bronze medalist at the 2021 World Championships, twice a silver medalist at the European Championships and a Maccabi Games champion on vault. Has the potential to get into contention depending on uh, whether he can bump up his execution a fraction. Oh, it was a little unstable coming down out of the uh, Lou vault, the Tsukahara double pike. Just seemed to be uh, drifting offline. Let's have a look at it again. Slightly jarred landing. Did well to hold it. Medvedev's uh, first World Cup medal was won back in Ljubljana in Slovenia in April of 2014. 32-year-old is uh, so experienced at international level. And you know what? He's shown unbelievable tenacity when it's come to injuries and getting beyond disappointments. 14.433 for him. So he's down by almost three tenths from qualification. 
Second vault for the Israeli gymnast based in Haifa. Ooh, that was a very uh, difficult looking landing in the Blanick. His ankle just seemed to buckle for a moment. Thank goodness he hopped back up afterwards and seemed okay. 12.6 for Hubaleva. She's down by just over two tenths from qualification. So in the uh, balance beam competition, still Georgia Vila who leads. And she has half a mark over Anna Laschewska, who is a tenth ahead of Sakaguchi Ayaka on 13.366 for bronze. That could all change with his last gymnast, Marine Boye of France. She was fourth at the World Championships. And she was fourth at the Olympics in Rio in 2016. Had a lovely World Cup moment last year when she won the balance beam title in Paris. Oh, didn't she do well to clamp down on that uh, drift to the side? Very nice, a double pike to dismount from Marine Boyer. She had a few adjustments on the apparatus. What will the execution score be for Medvedev? 14.116, uh, he's in seventh position. And quite a way down from third place in qualification. We'll bring you the classified results in a moment in the uh, men's vault competition. Here are those uh, classified results in the men's vault uh, final. And the winner, Carlos Euler of the Philippines, just ahead of Harry Hepworth of Great Britain, just ahead of Sheck Wai Hung of Hong Kong. Uh, very well done to the young British athlete to be sandwiched between such illustrious company. Sheck Wai Hung doing fantastically to get uh, onto the podium after a difficult qualification performance. He came up from eighth place to take bronze and Carlos Yulo, well he's just having a super weekend. Last score to come in for the uh, balance beam it will be Marine Boyes. Thirteen point eight six six. She takes the silver medal. The classified results in the balance beam uh, final. Anna Lashchevsky of Ukraine wins the bronze. Marine Boye of France takes the silver, and Italy's uh, Georgia Vila wins her first World Cup title. High standard of performance. Look at those scores. Really good work. Commiserations to Sakaguchi Ayaka, just missing out.
crikey, have we got a pommel horse final to bring you now. The standard of pommel horse competition at these World Cups this year has been superb. And I don't think it's going to change in the next half an hour or so. Famous last words as all of the gymnasts now come off the apparatus. But they've been in great form giving us spectacular entertainment. The finalists in the men's uh, pommel horse competition. This is one of those rare opportunities to see pommel horse and women's floor at the same time. Because it normally takes a place, as I'm sure you all know, the pommel horse on the first day of a World Cup weekend of finals. But uh, in Baku they like to be contrary. They say variety is the spice of life. Kazakhstan's Nariman Kurbanov, top qualifier. Xiaoyu Jan of Chinese Taipei, second best in qualifying. Matvey Petrov of Albania, fourth best. Ilya Kovtun of Ukraine, seventh best. Fifth best, Ferenc Sawant of Australia. In eighth place, Utkirbek Juraev of Uzbekistan. Third was Benjamin Osberger of France. And sixth was Rhys McLennigan of Ireland. On floor, Sakaguchi Ayaka, third best in qualifying, Siki Kaisolu of Turkey, sixth best, Nazanin Temurova of Azerbaijan, fifth best, Ireland's Halle Hilton, fourth best in qualifying, Ariana Bellardelli of Italy, seventh best, Ruby Pass, the second strongest qualifier, eighth best, Elvira Katsali of Greece, and the top qualifier, Marine Boyer of France. Just a brief word to the uh, first reserves. The uh, finalists in the men's pommel horse competition, Nariman Kurbanov of Kazakhstan, the top qualifier, will be first to go. He'll be followed by the second best in qualification, Xiao Yujian of Chinese Taipei. But hold on a moment because we finish with the world champion, the reigning world champion, Reese McLennigan of Ireland. He was sixth best in qualifying but always has the potential to do far more in a final. We've got the European champion from 2020 in there as well. So good was this final and these qualifiers that Li Chi Kai of Chinese Taipei, an Olympic medalist, couldn't get into the final. The finalists in the women's floor competition and the top qualifier was Marine Boyer of France, she's the last to go. Ruby Pass of Australia, second best, she'll go sixth in the order and will start with the third strongest in qualification, Sakaguchi Ayaka of Japan. The first reserve for the women's floor final, Mary Kanta of Norway. Waiting in the wings, the men's horizontal bar. First reserve is David Vicenish of Hungary. For men's vault, the gentleman you didn't uh, see was Don Cunningham of Ireland, formerly of uh, Great Britain. And the uh, women's beam first reserve was Kazakhstan's Aida Barijanova. And congratulations and yet commiserations at the same time to all of those who almost make it and to occupy the first reserve position. Sakaguchi Ayaka of Japan will be the uh, first to go in this women's floor final. She was a bronze medalist at the national championships last year. Third best here in qualifying. The undergraduate at Nippon Sports Science University scored 12.733.
She's a very nice gymnast. Part of this exciting generation coming through at international level from Japan. 20 year old in her first competition since the World Championships. Nariman Kurbanov of Kazakhstan, the top qualifier, 15.066. This young man has remarkable difficulty and he's a lovely clean gymnast to watch on the apparatus. Beautiful straight line. This is outrageously good clearance. So high over the pommels. Oh! <laughs> That is majestic from Nariman Korbanov. One was almost hesitant to take a breath during that, lest we disturb him. Thirteen, or rather, a twelve point seven three three was the score for Sakiguchi Ayaka in qualification. She's actually very experienced at domestic level, although we haven't seen a lot of her internationally. Won her first Japanese title in 2018. The thing that I think struck all of us at the World Championships was the composure of the team and the spirit that they have even when things didn't go their way, gosh, were they a unified force. Twelve point four three three. So she's not been credited with four tenths of difficulty that she had in qualification so we'll see if uh, an inquiry is made there Sevgi Kaisolo of, Kai of Turkey 12.5 in qualification the sixth best Really distinctive gymnast choreographically, Sevgi Kaya Solo. She blends striking choreography with good tumbling work. Oh, well, 15.3. If you didn't know before how good this gentleman was, the skeleton's out of the closet now. That's a whopping great number. Xiaoyu Jan of Chinese Taipei, the second best in qualification. His score was 14.566.
We've just seen a 15.3. The music in the background, if I'm not much uh, mistaken, was the uh, Thank You to the Volunteers song from the Islamic Solidarity Games of 2017. Lovely event where the gymnastics competition happened in this arena. He's got really good clearance on the Russian vendor swings. Beautiful hand placement in the centre of the apparatus. Gosh, lovely height. This is a treat. Just losing the form a little, switching from uh, Shivado to Magyar. Oh, come on, come on. Good recovery from Xiao Yu Chan. Is it going to be enough to get him into contention in a very packed field? 12.566 for Sevki Kaisolo. Big moment for her. Fifteen-year-old Nazanin Temurova who trains at the Orchak Sports Club in this building in the National Gymnastics Arena. Now she's made the floor final in front of her home crowd. Good luck to her. She's only 15, this uh, young gymnast gave it everything she had. 13.533 for Xiao Yu Jan. His difficulty is well down from qualification. The European champion from 2020. Matvey Petrov of Albania. He was the first reserve for the Olympic final. 4th best in qualification. Good single handle work. Like everyone we've seen so far, nice straight body, good clearance. Was Nari. Big flares, great hip height. Oh, I tell you what, Madve Petrov's looking good. Can he just hold that dismount? Yes, he can. He's still up there. He's still around and he's still challenging at 32. We hope to see much more of this uh, promising young uh, gymnast from Azerbaijan, Nazanin Temurova. 
She should feel so proud of making the floor final. It's a good floor final with some fine gymnasts in it. Yes, she struggled with some of her tumbling passes. But we hope that the Baku World Cup will continue to be her friend over the years and that we'll see her in many more competitions here. The Irish gymnast Hallie Hilton, fourth best in qualification. Eighteen-year-old Hallie Hilton, born in Ipswich, in England, but uh, her mother Mags from Ireland, and she has been competing for the Irish team for a little while. Petrov goes into second place, fourteen point seven six six. He's up by four tenths plus from qualification, almost half a mark. Ilya Kovtun of Ukraine, a 19 year old who was just outside of the top 10 in the all around competition at the Olympics. Back in 2020, he was the junior European champion on the Pommel Horse the same year that uh, the gentleman we just saw, Matvey Petrov, won the title at senior level. He showed a lot of control going into his Buznari. a little lower than some we've seen so far on the Russian vendor swings but he was just about keeping clearance again getting close to scraping the knees keeping it going with a little bend in the hips but he's such a big gentleman uh, Ilya Kovtun he's very tall and he is so technically skilled to work like that on a pommel horse marvellous Ali Hilton scores 12.4. She's down by almost two tenths from qualification. Currently sits in third position at the halfway mark. How lovely to see so many Irish gymnasts in the finals in Baku. It used to be one of those things that one saw once in a blue moon. It's now commonplace. Well done to uh, the Irish team. Sievki Kai Solo leads the way at the moment. Xiaoyu Jan, yeah, there's no surprise there at all. He submitted an inquiry for his difficulty score, which was over half a mark lower than qualification. I don't think that is uh, an unexpected state of affairs, but the inquiry has not been successful. Confirmation that the inquiry was not successful for Xiaoyu Jan. 
as we have this brief pause in the competition. The score for Ilya Kovtun is about to come in. And it's 14.433. So he drops in behind Petrov. Third place. Now Diman Kurbanov leads the way by half a mark or so. Fascinating actually, isn't it, to watch pommel horse and women's floor at the same time. It's a, a gymnastics riptide effect of two completely contrasting currents working in different directions, except unlike a riptide, it's thoroughly enjoyable. Ariana Belladelli of Italy. The 15-year-old from Rome makes her full senior international debut. That She went to an invitational competition in Luxembourg last month and won the floor title. Very nice gymnast. Good luck to her in her first World Cup final. Huge congratulations to Ariana Belladelli of Italy. Her first World Cup final ever. Very nice gymnast to watch on floor. Two very nice young gymnasts to watch on the pommel horse Ved and Sawant of Australia. A 19 year old reigning national champion. He was fifth best in qualification. All the time he's steadily improving his difficulty. Well, this is very nice looking. Keep it going. Just lost the leg separation for a moment. Oh, no, that's such a shame to see. The first half of that routine was an absolute crackerjack. I tell you what, this young man is so nearly there. He's just a dash of mustard away from being absolutely spot on. Two halves of a very fine routine from Vedant Sawant of Australia. Once the legs separated, it was so difficult for him to recover his form. He almost did, but eventually came off the apparatus. But I reiterate, this young man is so close to getting it all together. Very well done to Ariana Belladelli. She goes into the lead, 12.8. She's up by almost 0.4 from qualification. To the second highest qualifier, Ruby Pass of Australia, another 15 year old in this young floor final.
Many of you will be watching this in Australia and feeling quite rightly so excited about these young athletes representing your country. 13.066 for Vedant Sawant. Twenty-year-old Utkirbek Juraev of Uzbekistan. Twenty. He's from uh, Andijan in the Fergana Valley in the far east of Uzbekistan, an ancient city. Eighth best in qualification. Just having a few difficulties. Very nice all-around gymnast, though. He's the reigning South Central Asian champion. Well, he did very well to stay on the apparatus. Kirbek Juraev of Uzbekistan. Where does Ruby Pass uh, feature? She did uh, have some out of bounds issues in one of her passes. 12.9 was her scoring qualification. She is Australia's junior all around national champion. made her senior international debut in Doha. At the moment, Belladelli leads on 12.8. Behind Belladelli, it is Kaya Solo. And then Sakaguchi. So 12.433 is the number that currently occupies bronze. Ruby Pass was so impressive on the uneven bars yesterday. She looked uh, astonished as her score came in. But she shouldn't be astonished by these impressive numbers. They're going to keep getting better if she keeps performing like this, if she keeps developing at uh, international level. Very early days for her. She'll have events like the Commonwealth Games at home in uh, a few years time on her mind uh, undoubtedly all they have on their minds is uh, waiting to see what score Ruby Pass actually gets Ruby 12.466 as she goes into the bronze medal position Sakaguchi drops down into fourth. Two to go. Elvira Katsali of Greece, the penultimate competitor in this uh, final. The 19-year-old from Thessaloniki. Beautiful part of the world. Exquisite beaches. And wonderful uh, architecture. How's the architecture of her routine? Eighth in qualification, 12.4.
Elvira Katsali of Greece, three times a Greek champion. Kirbek uh, Jiraev scores 13.133. Benjamin Osberger of France, a third best in qualification with a score of 14.3, though he needs to go beyond that to match third place this time because 14.433 currently holds bronze. Good to see him competing on Palmer Horse. He's had some injury uh, difficulties lately, which is why he's not been doing uh, some big impact landings on things like floor. He's a jolly nice gymnast to watch. His form is great. This is smooth. Very nice pace. Magiata Shivado was effortless looking. Pirouettes round. Beautiful. Benjamin Osberger of France. Oh, that was a treat. Lovely, elegant gymnastics from the young gentleman all near the German border. Uh, Vera Cantali waiting for her score. And the undergraduate in European and International Studies scores 11.6. Four tenths of difficulty down from qualification. to Marine Boyer of France, the top performer in qualification with a score of just below 13. She's already won the medal on beam. What can she do here? There are few things in life for gymnastically that cannot be made better by the addition of Marine Boyer. She's a lovely acquisition for the French team, as is he. 14.6. Benjamin Osberger goes into the bronze at medal position with one to go. The only problem is it's him. The reigning world champion, Ireland's Rhys McLennigan, but he was the sixth best in qualification with 14.2. 15.3 leads the way. Beautiful move into handstand to begin. The key thing for Reese McLennigan is going to be whether he can control the leg separation. Th th exactly there. But he's done well to keep it going. Now what about in these Russian vendor strings? very difficult it's very tidy 
Shivado, excellent. Small leg separation in the Russians. Hand placement is good, very good. Pirouettes round, little overarch at the back, but he's through it. He has a high degree of difficulty. One suspects on this occasion, Kurbanov might have him. Now what about Marine Boyer? Some really nice choreography in her routine. Some complicated pirouette. She has that lovely move round from the high leg pirouette into the illusion turn that is uh, so nice. 12.8 is the score to beat. That's Ariana Belladelli. Could be quite a close final when we look at the standings at the end. such a popular gymnast she's so respected by the rest of the squad a youngster like uh, Benjamin Osberger have so much to learn from Marine Boyer and Marine Boyer has just won the title 12.833 3 by a matter of hundreds the classified results in the women's floor competition. Sevgi Kayasolo of Turkey takes the bronze. Well done to her, a second World Cup medal. The silver to the debutant Ariana Belladelli of Italy, another triumph. But it's Marine Boyer who just gets there by a fraction. Reese McLennigan has managed to take the silver medal, 14.933. Very good display, well up from qualifying. The final standings in the men's uh, pommel horse competition. The bronze to Matvey Petrov of Albania, silver to Ireland's Reese McLennigan, and the gold medal to Nariman Kurbanov of uh, Kazakhstan. And he won it well. First performer in the final, and frankly, it looked done and dusted. And that's saying a lot considering that the world champion was part of that field. One more final remains, the men's horizontal bar. Let's have a look at who's made it to the dance. Ivan Tikhonov of Azerbaijan, sixth best in qualification. Alexander Myakin of Israel, European Championship medalist from 2020. Ahmed El Maragi of Egypt, who won his first World Cup medal last week. Matsumi Kazuki of Japan and Curran Phillips of the USA. Mitch Morgans of Australia, reigning Oceania champion. Tin Servic of Croatia, the Olympic silver medalist. And Kitazono Takeru of Japan, the youth Olympic champion from 2018. Well, this should be fun. Lovely uh, collection of gymnasts that have made it through to the final. The start list for the men's horizontal bar final. And Matsumi Kazuki of Japan was the top performer in qualification. And when one looks at the people around him that he beats, people like the Olympic silver medalist in Serbic, people like the youth Olympic champion Kitazono Takeru, people like the European Championship medalist Alexander Myakinin, and so on. That gentleman from Japan, Matsumi Kazuki, has done very well. Can he keep it going now in the final? They will be hoping and hoping that Ivan Tikhonov can enjoy some success in this final. And the gentleman who is about to warm up, Ahmed El Maragi, 
had a glorious moment at the Doha World Cup last weekend where he won his first ever World Cup medal, a bronze on this apparatus. It was a superb moment in his career. And he's a lovely gymnast too. He's got very good technique. He's actually been around for many years performing at a high level on the horizontal bar. He won his first African Championship medal in 2018. A silver on the horizontal bar. Sometimes gymnasts from uh, nations like Egypt have not been very high profile on the international scene but in recent years especially with the addition of a World Cup in Cairo we've been seeing them more and more and that's been a real pleasure for all of us to get the chance to enjoy these excellent uh, gymnasts. Let us conclude your entertainment in Baku, this weekend of World Cup finals action. We have the horizontal bar competition now. Ivan Tikhonov of Azerbaijan. The sixth best in qualification with a 13.933 score. It's a little wild, the Coleman into the Kovac, and he was never fully in control, regrettably. Yesterday was a very fine day for the local gymnasts in a trickier one today in this big arena in front of an expectant crowd. The problem is that his form was not secure in the first skill, the Coleman. So by the time he went into the Kovac, it, it was a case of turning and turning in the widening gyre and he was moving away from the apparatus. His Katchev was better. His straddle Katchev was lovely into the pike Katchev. That was okay too. twist round beautifully into that dismount. So Vanya Tikhanov from Azerbaijan competed at the Olympic Games in Tokyo. Made this country very proud when he did so. He absolutely loves this building. He adores performing here. He had the lovely moment back in 2019 when his first ever coach became the head coach of the Azerbaijan national team and it had an enormous impact on him gymnastically. He actually went up about 15 places in the European all-around uh, competition in the gap in between. That's how strong that uh, coaching change was in terms of the improvement in his gymnastics.
Next will be Alexander Miakinin, who had a difficult final in Doha. Had a painful old clunk of the leg on the bar before Miakachev. Even Tikhanov made six World Cup finals last year, including taking a parallel bars a bronze medal in Osijek in Croatia. Twelve point two is the score for Ivan Tikhanov. Uh, regrettably, it's well down from a score of almost fourteen in qualification. Alexander Miakinin of Israel, 28-year-old, who won the European Championship bronze medal in 2020. Last season, he won World Cup medals in Cottbus, Doha and Cairo. The only one he missed out on was Baku. So if he can get something here, consider it a sort of completed set. Fourth best in qualification, though. So he'll need an improvement. That's the Casino, well performed. Into the Coleman. Oh, yes, now that's nice. The catch of that time is secure. I think that's where he had the problem in Doha after all the difficult skills not that a catch is easy <laughs> yeah that'll do very nicely from Alexander Miakinin certainly has delivered a contending performance with that display will feel so good for Alexander Miakinin after last week. He competes for the um, Akavi Tel Aviv multi-sport club, one of the most famous in the country. Point two is the score to beat to go into the lead. I don't think there's too much doubt that he will beat that. He has already five World Cup medals, including a title in Doha last year. Waiting in the wings, Ahmed El Maragi, as Alexander Miakinin scores 14.2. He's added a tenth of difficulty, a little execution as well. All of that means an improvement of nearly three tenths from qualification. Ahmed El Maragi of Egypt, 13.6 in qualification, just made it into the final. But what a triumph last week in Doha, the bronze medalist. The 27-year-old geologist from Alexandria, where you have a lot of uh, ancient things to study, just about holds that handstand. A 
Nice Casino. Keeps his swing just about go. The Coleman was wild, very wild. Thankfully, he's okay. He does have a real go big or go home approach to horizontal bar gymnastics, Ahmed El Maragi. It's what makes him exciting to watch. But on this occasion, it will not be most certainly a repeat from that result in Doha, unless it's a very strange horizontal bar final. Nice amplitude uh, with the hips on the Kachev into the pike position. Those are good looking Kachevs, technically sound. Just seemed to lose his former fraction there. It's a nice dismount, a little hopscotch uh, on the end, but the bulk of the routine was very good from Ahmed El Maragi. That's his casino, which uh, he got through with a little leg separation, but on the whole it was quite sharp. Do like those catchers, don't you? his heels together so nicely in that dismount he remains a contender he's got the routine to get onto the podium just didn't quite happen today Competed a couple of Mediterranean games. And he's had a good record at continental championship level, including in all around gymnastics as well. He was a bronze medalist in 2018. He's also been a vault medalist. So although we know him at world level, principally for the horizontal bar, he's a versatile athlete. 12.466 for Ahmed El Maragi. Natsumi Kazuki of Japan, the top performer in qualification. The 25-year-old from Osaka, but now based in Japan's capital, Tokyo, is a senior international debutant, and yet he's topped this impressive field. His Casina was powerful, led into good swing. Is Coleman likewise. He does lose his leg form a little at the end of both of those skills, but that's uh, common and understandable. Just got over the bar in the uh, straight Kachev. Straddle Kachev had no issues whatsoever. Oh, that's a gorgeous pirouette. As is that. Those are lovely. Happily see those on a dance floor. Well done to him, Matsumi Kazuki of Japan. It's a difficult routine. He's got lots of close control work with the apparatus that one risks missing because you're watching his big release skills, but so much difficulty on the horizontal bar is built with your close work, your in-bar work. There I'm sure you can see the right leg particularly uh, bends as he's coming out of the casino. So some small deductions will be applied to that. Slightly scrapes his toenails in that Kachev. But boy does he get some nice height in his dismount. He 
He is a university uh, graduate from Sendai. Trained at the Tokushikai uh, Gymnastics Club. And he's evidence, Natsumi Kazuki, of the often discussed strength in depth of the Japanese program. When we so seldom get the chance to see gentlemen like him at international level. And yet he was eight at the national championships in the all-around competition. He goes in the second place, 14.033, down by two tenths from qualification. As he winces because Miakinin jumped up by almost three tenths. Some people say Formula One is really a sport. What sport has stadium that's with the Matsumi, it was the execution that dropped a little. Some of those things that I was mentioning in terms of the form of his release elements just dropping him a fraction and that takes him below Miakinin the second half has uh, virtually completed their warm-ups we've had Curran Phillips, Mitch Morgans, Tim Serbich and now Kitazono Takeru And you're watching here the reigning Youth Olympic champion on the horizontal bar and just about everything else. Many called him the star athlete of the Youth Olympic Games, not just in gymnastics, but full stop. to go in this men's horizontal bar final. Curran Phillips of the United States of America, the second strongest in qualification. A 22 year old from uh, Naperville in Illinois. And an undergraduate in human biology at Stanford University. He was the top qualifier for the uh, parallel bars final yesterday and had uh, a rather tough time of things. Let's hope that it goes well for him now in this horizontal bar final. He has uh, a strong casino to open, it's well executed. What a nice Coleman that was. And uh, it was a good looking straight catch -ev until he came off. And for this very decorated gymnast domestically, it's something of a reflective moment perhaps as he heads back home and contemplates this big competition. This is his first World Cup event. He has completed at World Challenge Cup level. There's a lot mechanically about his gymnastics that is very good. No problem there with that Kachev. Repeating the skill. Straddle Kachev again. And the piked Kachev on this occasion. All of them have technique that is rather solid. And what a very nice dismount as well from Curran Phillips. Sometimes you look at a routine and it feels as though it was 99% of an absolutely secure display and that is the sensation here. Rather different from his Parallel Bars performance which had quite a few small issues throughout. This had one rather substantial one and the rest was absolutely fine. That was his repetition of the straight catch -ev. 
and stole the work comes nicely into the handstand position clicking the heels again the arms go very symmetrically by the side in the twist position the heels are together he won the horizontal bar title at a domestic event uh, called the winter cup very popular among American gymnastics fans that was early on in the season and as was mentioned yesterday he is the reigning collegiate or NCAA champion in parallel bars uh, gymnastics 13.133 he is exactly one full mark down from qualification attributed to the unintentional dismounts now it's always fun when he's around Mitch Morgans of Australia 30 year old super gymnast on the horizontal bar the reigning Oceania champion third best in qualification another who gives everything he has oh high casino that's a lovely Kovac into the Coleman no nearly oh his Kovac was poetry in motion So close. He made the horizontal bar final at the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham last year. You always have to admire the audacity of Mitch Morgans in wanting to put together these big routines. He's a thriller to watch on this apparatus. Very good catch, Ev. Oh, lovely straddle catch, Ev, as well. His clearance was super. Secure pirouette work. And he dismounts well. Well, for Mitch Morgans, it is a theme that we've seen throughout this horizontal bar final, nearly but not quite. It's happened to most of the gymnasts, actually. We've only had two who've not uh, come off the apparatus. Two out of the six. So it really is there for somebody to take control of. We've got the fifth and seventh highest qualifiers to come. That's his Kovac. And that was almost his Coleman. What bold work. Twelve point eight for Mitch Morgans. He's down by almost a mark and a half from qualification. So all of this means that we have two gymnasts who've scored fourteen plus. Miyakinen in the lead, Matsumi in second place, and then currently third, it's Curran Phillips of the USA, with that full mark deduction for coming off the horizontal bar. Still, it's not as though we've got an Olympic medalist and the youth Olympic champion to come. Oh no, wait, hang on. Tin Serbic of Croatia, the silver medalist in Tokyo. One of the absolute finest 
on the horizontal bar. And he won a silver medal last week in Doha. Stolder into the Kachev, into a linked Kachev, and another one. He's always been such a master of the uh, Kachev skills. Oh, he just lost his swing coming out of the Coleman, but he's okay. We'll carry some deductions. Certainly that is going to feature in the final analysis. Tim Serbic of Croatia, fifth best in qualification. But in this rather tricky horizontal bar final, he navigates his own moment of complexity coming out of the Coleman. He is a gymnast who has had to adjust to the new code of points more than many of the leaders have had to because his previous routines have been so reliant on his beautiful Kachevs, but now they are limited in what you can do. He's had to work on different skills and he's been very diligent in trying to refine this routine with things like that Coleman. He actually skipped the last World Championships or the World Championships, I should say, after the uh, Olympic Games in order to refine his uh, new routine composition. Fourteen point two Miakinin in the lead. Matsumi Kazuki second fourteen point zero three three. Karen Phillips, 13.133, occupying bronze. Expectation of a change to those standings. We have some very good scientists at in this field, a mechanical engineer in Tin Serbic, a human biologist in Curran Phillips. Is he going to engineer his way onto the leaderboard? Yes, he is. 13.666 for Tin Serbic. It is on Takeru of Japan, the last to go, the seventh best in qualification and the reigning youth Olympic champion, the star of Buenos Aires. He won five gold medals and then went on to the Olympics in Tokyo to win a team silver. He's also a three-time junior world champion and yet this is his World Cup debut. Cena has smoothly performed. As is his, oh, I was about to say as is his Coleman, but he didn't quite get it. It looked pretty promising for the most part. Gosh, it's been that sort of final. And all of that means that in Serbic is 13.366 is likely to secure a medal. Kitazono Takeru back on the apparatus.
that time. No problem. That's lovely. Great shoulder flexibility. Supreme dismount as well. What elegance from Kirizono Takeru of Japan. And it's another of those routines that was almost there. And that's the last piece of action we'll see at this weekend of World Cup gymnastics in Baku. But how lovely it is to see uh, Kitazono Takeru competing at a World Cup competition. really seemed in flight as though he was going to make it that might well be the dismount of the day His score in qualification was 13.733. 13.266, evidence of what that routine can be, a 6.1 for difficulty. And he might well have taken the title if he'd stayed on with that Coleman. The final standings in the men's horizontal bar competition, bronze fought in Serbich of Croatia, the silver medal won by Matsumi Kazuki of Japan and the title goes to Alexander Myakinin of Israel one week after having a really rotten time of things in the Doha final. How well he's performed here. will bring you in a short while the victory ceremonies for the five events that have taken place today don't go too far away scenes of celebration imminent
the victory ceremony for the men's vault competition in Baku. The winner of the bronze medal, She Kui Hung of Hong Kong. Second place and silver medalist, Harry Hepburn, Great Britain. The first ever vault medal at World Cup level for Great Britain's Harry Hepworth. And uh, Carlos Euro of the Philippines takes the title in Baku. The gentleman who won the World Championship title in 2021 and the silver medal last year, continuing to illustrate why he is one of the very finest vaulters in the world. And we'll now have the national anthem of the Philippines. Julian Felipe's 1898 anthem Lupan Hinirang played in honour of Carlos Ciulo. There they are, the medalists in the men's vault competition at the Baku World Cup. The ceremonies continue at the National Gymnastics Arena in Baku. Next up it will be the women's balance beam. The victory ceremony for the women's balance beam competition. The bronze medal to Anna Lashevska of Ukraine a week after her silver in Doha. Silver won by a veteran balance beam performer in Marine Boyer of France. But a first ever World Cup title for Italy's Georgia Vila. Three times a Youth Olympic Games champion and a World and European Championship medalist. And now the national anthem of Italy.
Il canto degli italiani, written by Goffredo Mamelli and Michele Novaro, played in honour of Georgia Vila, joined by her fellow medalists in the balance beam competition in Baku. On we go to the men's pommel horse ceremony in just a moment. The victory ceremony for the men's pommel horse competition at the National Gymnastics Arena in Baku, Azerbaijan. Winner of the bronze medal, Matvey Petrov of Albania. Taking second place, the reigning world champion, Ireland, Rhys McLennigan. The winner, the gentleman who won in Doha a week ago, Nariman Kurbanov of Kazakhstan. The man who is yet to win a big one and who finished fourth on pommel horse at the world championships last year and the year before he's been an asian championship silver medalist an islamic solidarity game silver medalist a world university game silver medalist can he make it his year first the national anthem of kazakhstan Written by Shamshi Kalayakov with lyrics by Jumakan Najimenadov and Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, the state anthem of the Republic of Kazakhstan. And there they are, the medalists in the men's uh, pommel horse competition. Two more victory ceremonies to bring you before the conclusion of our coverage from Baku, Azerbaijan. The victory ceremony for the women's floor competition. The bronze medal to Turkey's Sevgi Kaisolo, a home away from home whenever the Turkish gymnast are in Azerbaijan and her second ever World Cup medal. A first ever World Cup medal for Adriana Belladelli of Italy. World Cup debutant this weekend. The title won by Marine Boyer of France, an excellent day for her to add to her silver medal one in the balance beam competition. And in what was uh, a very young floor final, it was the oldest and most experienced gymnast who took the title. And now we'll have the national anthem of France.
La Marseillaise, written in 1792 by Claude Joseph Rouget de Lille, played in honor of Marine Boyer. The medalists in the women's floor exercise at the Baku World Cup. victory ceremony for the men's horizontal bar competition winner of the bronze medal Olympic silver medalist in Serbage of Croatia Congratulations to Matsumi Kazuki of Japan on his senior international debut, his first ever World Cup medal. The title won by Alexander Miakinin of Israel. An excellent performance from him. And this completes a something of a World Cup set for him because he won medals in Cottbus, Doha and Cairo last year. The only one he missed was Baku. And that's the one he's just got now. Oh, and by the way, it's the gold. And we'll now have the national anthem of Israel. Natalie Hertz, Imba and Shmuel Cohen's uh, Hativka played in honour of Alexander Miakinin. The medalist in the men's horizontal bar competition in Baku. And as the medalist departs, so do we, with seven nations having won gold medals in Azerbaijan in the women's competition. Two for France, one for Italy, one for China in the men's, two for Kazakhstan, two for the Philippines, one for Israel and one for Azerbaijan. One more World Cup remains. It is in Cairo and we'll see you there at some point down the road as the gymnastics season continues. I've been Ollie Hogben. It's been a pleasure having your company. <laughs>